Our next speaker is right from Massachusetts. Dr. Phyllis Mullenix started her career at the University of Kansas with a PhD in pharmacology with a specialty in neurotoxicology. She completed a postdoctorate at Johns Hopkins School of Public Health in Environmental Medicine. In 1977, she joined the Department of Psychiatry at Children's Hospital in Boston and joined the Department of Neuropathology with Harvard Medical School. From there, she moved to Forsyth Dental Research Institute and was the head of the Department of Toxicology for 11 years. In 1995, she published the groundbreaking study linking fluoride with damage to the central nervous system. Currently, Dr. Mullenix is a research associate at Children's Hospital Department of Psychiatry and lecturer in radiation oncology at Harvard Medical School. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Phyllis Mullenix. I want you to know I was born and raised in Missouri, the show me state. I talk a little slower, and so I think I ought to have a little longer to talk because it takes me longer to get it out. <laughs> Yes, I want to tell the story of how I was introduced to fluoride. I will tell you the truth. Fluoride never even entered my thoughts before 1982. I was at Children's Hospital. I, my specialty was I was to develop animal models to, screen, uh, to look at and develop technology that would screen for screen substances for having an adverse effect upon the brain and uh, behavior. In the process of doing that, um, I drew the attention of Dr. Jack Hine, who was the director of the Forsyth Dental Center in Boston. It's right next to the Museum of Fine Arts, if you're not familiar with it. It's an old institution that uh, used to provide free dental care for all the children of Boston. Dr. Hyde wanted me to come to Forsyth because he wanted me to, to apply the new technology that we were working on to dental products. And he was suspicious that many of the dental products were causing a problem for the brain. And he wanted me to come and to develop the new computer system that we were uh, in the process of working on. It was to be a brand new system that would totally uh, make screening for neurotoxicity an objective measure. Uh, I'm going to, if they can turn down the slides, I'm going to, or turn down the lights so we can see the slides. I'm not trying to get you into the science, I'm just trying to get you to realize what was going on. We developed the first computer pattern recognition system where a computer actually did what the eyeball would do in terms of looking at uh, behaviors. This computer system, we, we got the first VAC system and it was totally dedicated to doing nothing but following the movements of animals and being able to pick out abnormal behavioral patterns. So I moved then to Forsyth, I agreed uh, to come and to uh, set the system up, and I also agreed that this system would be applied to fluoride as the first thing that we would study. When I moved to Forsyth, Dr. Jack Hine introduced me to what was known as the, the world's leading expert on fluoride chemistry and fluoride toxicology. That individual's name was Dr. Harold Hodge. Dr. Harold Hodge is one of the founding fathers of the Society of Toxicology. Dr. Hodge also was the chief pharmacologist on the Manhattan Project. And it was his responsibility to uh, look at the toxicology of fluoride, although I didn't know that at the time. Then um, uh, I, I worked on the computer system at, at Forsyth. We developed, we had our laboratory, we had our video cameras, we had the computers going. It took a lot of years. This system was successfully set up. Uh, you know, it was the first system, as I said, where human intervention in doing these tests was totally taken out. So it was an objective measure. 
And then we, um, I had a physicist that worked with me, Dr. William Kernan, who was the head physicist at the uh, Ames Laboratory. And um, in fact, he designed the programs to follow the movements of hydrogen particles through a bubble chamber. And he says, well, if we can follow hydrogen particles through a bubble chamber, we can follow rats through three-dimensional space. We took this system, we developed it, and we applied it to fluoride. Now, um, I must say that in what this computer, this is a digitized picture of what the computer sees. And so I'm just pointing this out because, as I say, this was a, a very unique system. And I was sought out by many different groups to apply this system to many different, neuro, many different substances that were suspected. And the one that we developed that was most successful was in um, the look at the neurotoxicity of the treatments for our childhood leukemia. And uh, our system was put into the uh, yearbook of oncology, and we were very successful. Then we applied it to fluoride, and uh, we found some very suspicious results. We published this paper in 1995. Uh, it's not very clear. I'm so sorry, the, the, maybe the lights are a little too bright. Can we dim the lights a little? Anyway. We found some very suspicious results. We published this in a peer-reviewed journal in neurotoxicology and teratology. I reported the results to Dr. Jack Hine, the director of the institute. He got very excited. He says, we must fly to Washington and present this to the National Institute of Dental Research. He says, we also need to report it to certain industries, which I proceeded and I did. I submitted a grant to the National Institutes of Health in 1992 to look at this. I gave a seminar at my institution, for, um, Forsyth, and I was <laughs> meted with, met with some reaction from the uh, uh, so senior members of the staff that they were very concerned. They were afraid that their money from uh, the National Institute of Dental Research would be taken away if I published this information. Anyway, the paper came out. They, uh, it was, um, they Forsyth notified the National Institute of Dental Research uh, prior to it and they asked me to do a television conference on this before my information came out. They wanted to see what we were saying.